find the Jordan form of the real two by two matrix, A equals zero minus four, one, four. The point of this problem, we're not gonna be able to find a basis of eigenvectors. That means we can't put this matrix in diagonal form. As an alternative, we'll try Jordan form. First step, let's see what eigenvectors we can find. So I form my characteristic polynomial, determinant lambda i minus a. We get this matrix, I take its determinant. What comes out, we get lambda minus two squared. So our eigenvalue is two with multiplicity two. To find eigenvectors, we set up our null space equation for our eigenvalue. So that's gonna be, we're interested in null space two times the identity minus a. That's gonna give us this equation here. So I wanna solve for a and b. What happens? If I let b be equal to minus one, we'll have a equals two. And so my eigenvector, okay, first base is a vector, is gonna be two minus one. Of course, I check my work. So we apply a to v1, we work it out, and then I get two times v1, so my check works. Now, here's the problem. If you note, we only have one eigenvalue, one eigenvector. I'm not gonna be able to find another basis vector that's an eigenvector. So what do we do? We look at Jordan form. But before we go there, let's take a closer look at our matrix. Before we find the Jordan form, let's first look for the minimal polynomial. The idea here is, if I take a matrix A, we put it in its characteristic polynomial as a matrix polynomial, what comes out is the zero matrix. In our special case, that means a squared minus four a plus four times the identity equals the zero matrix. Now, we should see that directly, so I'm just gonna take a, put it in this equation. Okay, we take our square, and then I combine the terms. Note, the zero matrix comes out. The idea behind the minimal polynomial, we're trying to find the smallest polynomial, such that if I put my matrix in, zero comes out. Now, we know if we put our matrix into the characteristic polynomial, zero comes out, so we have at least one. The idea is, for the minimal polynomial, it'll be unique if we have lead coefficient one, and it's gonna divide the characteristic polynomial. So in our special case, the options are lambda minus two squared or lambda minus two. If we try lambda minus two, I'm looking at the equation a minus two i equals this matrix, and that's definitely not equal to zero. So my minimal polynomial has to be lambda minus two squared. That's where the problem arises. We have a theorem that states a matrix A is diagonalizable if and only if its minimal polynomial has only linear factors. So that means no squares, cubes, or anything of higher exponent. In this case, I have a square, so this matrix is definitely not diagonalizable. So how do we find our Jordan form? The first step is we take a look at the minimal polynomial. For each eigenvalue, we're gonna assign a set of Jordan blocks. The minimal polynomial is gonna tell me for each eigenvalue, the size of the largest Jordan block. Now, in our special case, we have eigenvalue two. The exponent is a two. So this tells me I have to have a Jordan block of size two. Since I have a two by two matrix, I only have room for one two by two Jordan block. So the idea here is, I just need to tell you how to set up a Jordan block, and then we're done. Now, to set one up, we put the eigenvalue down the diagonal. So it's gonna be twos on the diagonal. For the diagonal above the main diagonal, we put ones, and then every other entry is zero. So for a special case, I have two, one, zero, two as my Jordan form. So that's our answer. Now, of course, that doesn't give us a feel for what the Jordan form is actually doing. So let's take a look at it mechanically, and then we'll take a look what the theory is doing. Okay, so let's see what the Jordan form actually says. Now, for my first basis vector, we're using the eigenvector that we found before, v1, which is two minus one. So the way I read the first column, that's just the eigenvector equation, a, times v1 is equal to two times v1. 
I need to find another basis vector V2. Okay, if I take a look at what the Jordan form says, that's gonna tell me how to find it. So that's the second column. This is gonna say, if I apply A to V2, we're gonna get back V1 plus twice V2. If I rewrite that as a matrix vector equation, okay, we can try to solve for A and B. Okay, when I do that, I'll have A plus 2B equals minus one. So if I let B be equal to zero, A is gonna be equal to minus one, and then my second basis vector is gonna be minus one, zero. So our basis that puts us in Jordan form is gonna be V1 equals two minus one, V2 equals minus one, zero. Let's see that our basis puts our matrix in Jordan form. So I'll form the matrix P by loading the basis vectors in as our columns. So that gives us two minus one, minus one, zero. I form P inverse, then I compute P inverse AP. When we work at that matrix multiplication, we wind up getting two, one, zero, two, and that checks my Jordan form. Now, how about the big picture? So let's look at the characteristic polynomial, the minimal polynomial, and the connection to nil potent matrices. Characteristic polynomial in this case, we put J in to the characteristic polynomial equation. So I'll have determinant lambda i minus j. So what's happening? I'll have lambda minus the eigenvalues down the diagonal. We'll have minus ones above the main diagonal and then zeros above that. And then zeros below the main diagonal. So that's a general Jordan block. So the characteristic polynomial is a straight shot. We just multiply down the diagonal. That gives us, in our special case, lambda minus two squared. In general, lambda minus the eigenvalue raised to the size of the block. For the minimal polynomial, here we note by Kelly Hamilton, I have j minus two i squared gives me zero. j minus two i is just gonna give me this non-zero matrix. But if you note, this non-zero matrix is a null potent matrix, meaning if I raise it to a power, we get zero. Now, our minimal polynomial is then gonna be the same as the characteristic polynomial. So that's a special feature of a Jordan block. Okay, if you note, Jordan block is sort of the opposite of a diagonal matrix. Okay, in a diagonal matrix, we only have linear factors in the minimal polynomial. For a Jordan block, we have those powers as high as they can possibly be, okay, equal to the degree of the polynomial. In the big picture, suppose we're over the complex numbers. Then, any n by n matrix can be put in upper triangular form. If we get lucky, we get diagonal form. If we're not so lucky, we can at least put it in Jordan form. So that's gonna mean block diagonal, the blocks are gonna be Jordan blocks, so we're still upper triangular. That's gonna be the best that we can hope for. Now, let's go back to our special case. So where did we get the V2 for the basis that puts us in Jordan form? How do we get V1? Well, V1 was an eigenvector, so that means a minus 2i of V1 is zero, or V1 is in the null space of A minus 2i. We couldn't find another eigenvector to fill out our basis, so where do we look for another basis vector? The place to look is the null space of A minus 2i squared. That's gonna mean V2 satisfies A minus 2i squared of V2 equals zero, but A minus 2i of V2 is not zero. If a minus 2i of v2 is zero, it's an eigenvector, which means it's in the span of v1, and then we have no chance of getting a basis. So that's gonna mean I'm gonna have to find a w, which is non-zero, so that a minus 2i of v2 equals w. If that's the case, we apply a minus 2i to both sides. Okay, on the left-hand side, we're gonna get zero. Okay, a minus 2i squared of anything is zero. On the other side, I have a minus 2i of w, so that's gonna be equal to zero, which means w is an eigenvector. We might as well let w be equal to v1. If I do that, what happens? Then I have a minus 2i of v2 equals v1. I push 2v2 to the other side, and then I have av2 equals 
v1 plus 2v2. That's how we get the second column of our Jordan form. You'll note the reason that works is because we let w be equal to v1. 